Welcome to this video. Um, I am going to be teaching you today about Mendelian genetics. This will be a little bit of a review and preparatory information for you. If you are taking a general biology class, it could be useful. If you are preparing for the T's test, it could be useful. Or if you just want a refresher of basic Mendelian genetics. So let's start off with talking a little bit about who Gregor Mendel was. So here is Gregor Mendel, and um, he was an Austrian monk scientist. So Gregor Mendel, an Austrian monk and he is given the name the father of genetics. His curious mind and his appreciation for creation allowed him to perform some very simple, elegant experiments that helped to um, elucidate some of the basic principles of simple genetics. So he did his work in the 1850s and 60s. He published in the 1860s. He was pretty well ignored for about 40 years and then finally started to gain some traction after his death, um, as far as the principles that he had um, figured out with basic genetics. He chose to do his experiments on pea plants. And the reason he picked those is because they are easy to grow. It's not gonna take very long to look at multiple generations. And because he could either have them self-fertilize because they have male and female parts, and so then he could make pure bread or homozygous plants and just watch uh, how they stay the same from generation to generation. Or he could cross fertilize from one plant to another to see how different forms of traits interacted. And that's how he eventually figured out dominant and recessive, for example, which we'll talk about today. So he experimented on pea plants to learn how some traits are inherited. Let's go ahead and put a box around this. I'm gonna use a fat Sharpie. Put a box around this and highlight this part, this wall around it in orange. Like that. And oh, this is number one. And then number two, when we get there, I'm going to put that in orange too. And then Gregor Mendel, that's a name you should know. So let's highlight that in yellow, okay? And then just for fun, let's see, I don't like this orange. That one's not working as well. It bleeds too much. Here we go. This is hopefully better. Let's get a little more color on this page. So again, I want to reiterate that what Mendel was so good at was looking at simple inheritance patterns and pea plants were really good for that. What we now know is that what he looked at with the pea plants would be one gene that could come in a couple of different forms. Let's say a tall plant or a short plant. And always there was one form that was dominant and the other that was recessive. We now know that there are vastly more complex patterns of inheritance, but you gotta start somewhere, right? So any student that's wanting to learn basic genetics needs to start with understanding the difference between a simple dominant and recessively inherited trait like pea plants show with many of their characteristics. So Mendel purposely chose plants with many, what we would call either or traits. And these are ones that didn't demonstrate blending.
So examples of that would be if you've um, taken genetics, you'll, be, you'll have heard things like co-dominant, right? That's when both forms of a gene get to be equally expressed. And what Mendel looked at did not talk about blending. Now we do know there are genes that can be like that. For example, blood typing can be like that. But that's not what Mendel was studying. So we're not talking about any of those other more complex things today. So he ones that don't demonstrate blending of traits. And these uh, plants then that he had are called a few different names actually. So one is true breeding and Another term would be purebred, means the same. Or if you want to get into more of the genetic terms, you would also could call this homozygous, meaning that they, since you get two copies of each um, gene, then this would mean, this homo means same, and so it means that both copies are the same. So let's go ahead and highlight these three terms that are all hinting at uh, purebred plants. And now let's talk about two traits that he looked, or sorry, one trait that he looked at. So the first example we'll look at today is, um, here's an example P trait that Mendel studied. He looked at seed form. So when the plant grew up and produced seeds, he could look at the seeds and very clearly see if they were round or wrinkled. And because this is an either or kind of thing, they never were like halfway between round and wrinkled. They were always round or wrinkled. And this really helped him to be able to establish the studies that he was doing. So the seeds were either round shaped, and we'll put that in green, or wrinkled. And we'll put that in blue. Now, the next thing he did was he took a purebred plant that was allowed to self-pollinate. This was another reason why he wanted to use pea plants because um, allowed to, oops, sorry, allowed to self pollinate. So the purebred plants were allowed to self-pollinate. What that means is that some plants, and pea plants are one of these, they have both male and female parts on them. So a purebred plant that makes round seeds could make sperm to fertilize its own eggs and all of the offspring are going to be the same. So the purebred results are going, all the offspring look just like their parents. So let's use our yellow highlighter. Here's a term, you're gonna to need to know again this word purebred. You're also going to need to know what self-pollinate means. And remember that's when, if the round seeds this, they make their own sperm that fertilize their own eggs, so therefore all of their offspring are going to be round seeds. And a purebred wrinkled uh, seed plant will do the same. It will make sperm that fertilize its own eggs, and then all of the offspring will have uh, wrinkled seeds. So this is what happens when purebred plants are allowed to self-pollinate. And then let's go ahead and highlight this word purebred again as it's coming up. And then the word phenotype is a good one for you to know. The phenotype is the physical appearance of the organism. So the phenotype of, oops, of these offspring is the same as its parents. And this word means the physical appearance. So when you think about some terms that you need to know when you prepare for a basic genetics test or the TEAS exam, 
you should know, I'll put them down here, Gregor Mendel, the father of genetics, you should know that these three words all mean that the offspring all look the same as the parents. So purebred, if they self-pollinate, true breeding, and homozygous. These three words mean roughly the same thing. And when they are allowed to self-pollinate, then their offspring all look the same as them. And the word for what they look like in genetics, we call that the phenotype. And I always remember it because phenotype starts with a PH and so does physical appearance. And that helps me remember that the phenotype is what the organism looks like. So those are your terms to practice. Okay, we are going to now tackle our next page on Mendel's first experiments. So if you're someone that likes to take a picture of my notes, this would be a good time to do that before I flip to the next page. Okay, so then let's talk about Mendel's first experiments and we will run into yet more terminology uh, to help you become more comfortable with. So. The first um, thing we'll start with is we're kind of looking at the same thing we did on the previous page, but now we're showing what happens when they get cross-pollinated. So let's say that this was a plant with phenotype round seeds. And you wouldn't know this just by looking at them, right? The round seeds would just look round to you, but I'm going to tell you that when we did this parental cross, so parental generation, Let's start with purebreds, okay? Just like Mendel did. So he started with purebred, or remember I said you can call this homozygous parents. And then he um, took the plant that has round seeds and it's a purebred, and then he cross-pollinated. Now I just love to imagine how careful he was. He used a tiny little paintbrush and he took the um, male part of the plant. So just brushed some of the pollen from the anthers on the pea plant. And then he would brush them onto the stigma or the female part of another pea plant. So he was, that's what we mean when we say cross-pollinated. He took a round, a purebred round seed plant and crossed it with a purebred wrinkled. And then that he would um, get seeds and, and then plant them. So seeds would be produced because of that cross in the female plant. And then he would grow those up to see what kind of seeds they produced. And so let's go ahead and highlight uh, round with green and wrinkled with blue like we did on the previous page. And then here's a new word for you, cross-pollinated. So it basically just means he crossed this plant with this plant. And this first cross, whenever you're doing a genetics experiment, the first one you're studying is called the parent generation. And a cross, like I said, so he's taking the sperm from one and putting it on the stigma of the other plant. And his result was that all of the offspring in what's called the filial or family or first generation, F1 generation, were all forming round seeds. So the result, all offspring formed round seeds. Wow, right? Not a single wrinkled among them. So this was the first principle that famous Gregor Mendel proposed and that is with these simple kind of genetics inheritance or something called the law of dominance. So Mendel learned that in simple inheritance, one form of a trait is always dominant 
And so that's another term for you. Dominant over the other form. Over the other form. And that other one is called recessive then. So um, now he figured out in, this, in these pea plants that round seeds, that's a trait that must be dominant or dominant form of the tra trait. And therefore, wrinkled seeds must be recessive. And in fact, if he didn't know yet, then he might think we'll never see the wrinkled seeds again because they are completely hidden by the dominant form. So let's go ahead and highlight some of these new terms, dominant, recessive, over here, and then law of dominance is that in simple inheritance, you have one that's dominant over the other form. And then filial one generation, these are the offspring that came from that original parent cross of whatever it is you're studying, whatever trait and whatever the genotypes are, or, um, genetic makeup of those. Okay, so then he's going to do the next um, experiment. He's gonna take a couple of these seeds grow them up into um, plants and then cross them to see what happens next. So this represents two of the offspring, two of the F1 generation getting crossed. So let's use that word cross pollinate again and highlight that in yellow, this new term, as opposed to self pollinating. And now what we know though is that these all of these seeds from the F1 generation are what we now call hybrid or heterozygous. Those terms mean the same thing. And this means that instead of being purebred and if they self-pollinated, they would always make the same kinds of seeds, they are no longer purebred. They now have been, they're a mixture between a, the genetics of a round seed and a wrinkled seed. So we call this a hybrid um, or heterozygous cross. So this F1 generation, this happens to be a hybrid cross. And now look what happens. With the offspring, we see that 75% of them will be round, just like the parents. But now look, this recessive one comes back from, you could call it the grandparents generation, in the F2 generation. So 75% are round. So like if he got 100 seeds from this, 75% of them would be expected to be round like their parents. And that is what we would call a three to one ratio where th uh, three out of four in this case, so 75% will display the dominant phenotype and only 25% or one out of four, so this one right here, um, this is the recessive form. shows up again when the hybrid parents were crossed. So we've got this term recessive, right? It means it was hidden originally, but then when you have two hybrids crossed, you sh it shows up again, but in a smaller proportion. So you might get 25% uh, that will show that recessive. And then um, the dominant trait is going to be the bulk of what you see though, in the three to one. And then F1 generation, cross and then the F2 generation. These are the offspring of that F1 generation cross. And then hybrid or heterozygous means that the organism has two forms of the gene in its genetic makeup. So in this case, we're crossing a round with a wrinkled, or sorry, it was two rounds, excuse me, two rounds, but you end up getting 25% that end up wrinkled. Okay, so now let's um, wrap up this page with some more key terms.
So we've got filial and the F1 generation and the F2 generation. Then the term cross-pollinate as opposed to self-pollinate. Then we've got uh, things like hybrid or heterozygous. Then we've got uh, terms like dominant form of the trait and the recessive form of the trait. And then I'd like you to know the result of this hybrid cross. Whenever you do this hybrid cross like this, uh, where you they're no longer purebreds, then you would expect, and it's simple dominance like this, you would expect a three to one ratio. And that's a question that you could get asked on a genetics test for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna just, just about done to wrap up this video and I will do a part two where then I start using Punnett squares and I compare monohybrid and dihybrid crosses. If you wanna watch that one, it will be part two. The other thing I wanted to say as I'm wrapping this video up is that next Tuesday, so this is June of 2023, I'm gonna be doing a live webinar for a company called Archer Review. They help students prepare for the T7 and I'm gonna be going through all of these basic genetics and including this part two of the video. So maybe I'll see you there um, and otherwise. Uh, oh, and you can find more of my stuff at sciencewithsusanna.com. It's spelled like this, science. So if you found my YouTube channel, my website is, I think, a lot better organized for students that you can find what it is that you want. And I also have a lot of study resources that you can use as you study along. And the handouts are all available there too. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.